administration has given us none. Mr. Speaker, I am uh, delighted to yield next the gentleman from Arkansas, Mr. Hill. Well, I thank the gentleman from Louisiana, and unlike my friend from Knox County, Tennessee, I have the utmost respect for his ability to manage a special order with uh, great aplomb, style, and skill. And I thank my friend, the speaker, tonight for the time to talk about something that I've reflected on now for the seven years that I've served uh, in the House. And over those seven years, I've been to our southwest border seven times. And I'm in preparation right now to go back uh, next week. So I rise tonight to bring attention to what is a growing crisis at our southwest border and share the fear and the frustration that are experienced there by those communities, their law enforcement officers, their schools, their churches, and to reflect on the Biden administration's just continued neglect there. And this is shocking to us, uh, Mr. Speaker, because uh, the first order of good governance by the executive is to protect the homeland, secure it, protect the people. Public safety is such a critical element in each of our communities. And so it makes no sense to any of us, whether we've served for a brief period of time or for decades here, that our executive would leave our border so open, so vulnerable. Over the last six months, we've had over a million migrant encounters at our southern border with over 221,000 last month alone. That's a high for the Biden administration, 221,000 encounters. And as my friend from uh, who just spoke suggested, that doesn't count the ones we don't catch, the so-called getaways. This overwhelming number of migrants swarming at our southwest border, though, should come at no surprise based on the actions of the administration. So shock, yes, because the executive has abandoned its primary mission, but surprise, no. And let me explain why, Mr. Speaker. In the earliest days of his presidency, President Biden repealed the Trump era policies that discouraged illegal immigrants from flooding our borders and kept our communities safe. And this was after a lot of trial and error. I think Mr. Trump went through possibly three secretaries of Homeland Security, had a lot of frustration at this very tough challenge. But in President Biden's decision to do away with those Trump policies that were ultimately working so effectively, he replaced them with nothing, right. nothing. Now, here again, I have to express Shock, perhaps not surprised. This is a crisis oriented administration, but certainly shocked because no successful manager ends a working policy and replaces it with nothing. If you buy a business and you want to change the HR policy, you just don't say, hey, starting tomorrow, there is no HR policy. I'll let you know what it is in a few months. It's nuts. President Biden's efforts to suspend and terminate the border wall construction are costing taxpayers between $1.8 and $2 billion because we're still paying those contractors to build the wall that's not being built due to contract penalties. And of course, the state of Texas has stepped in and perhaps they're going to take on some of that and build it itself using Texas taxpayer dollars for a national, international border. Now, as my friend said a few minutes ago, the administration is moving forward to end what's called Title 42. Title 42 has proven to be an effective effort at contributing to border security. And while the Biden administration continues to use it less and less, in fact, last month, Mr. Speaker, 50% of all the migrant encounters were processed for expulsion under Title 42. So it's a critical element of both public health and public safety at the border. And the Biden proposes to have that policy end here in just a few weeks in the middle of May, and yet he's proposed no policy to replace it. And again, we can expect a surge at our border. In fact, the Customs and Border Patrol, the executive branch agency responsible for guarding our border, securing our border, 
expects that to surge to 18,000 migrant encounters per day. Mm. Now, whoa, let's do the math, because that sounds uh, un unbelievable. But you're talking 18,000? That's a half a million people per month. We're running right now annualized, I just reported it to you, at about 2 million encounters. And this is a half million per month. 6 million people? Really? We really think that's border security? We think that is an appropriate policy for this great nation? It's insane. So we'll see the impact of this crisis throughout our communities. And as many of my colleagues have said, every state is a border state now as a result of this irresponsible approach. So, Mr. Speaker, the truth is the Biden administration has made it clear they have no plan, apparently, to secure our border. They've certainly had a year and a half to demonstrate that they have one. And it's the American people that are suffering. So in summary, what are the ramifications? Millions coming into our country illegally, without proper documentation, without the right public health concerns. Every state now is a border state. As reported a few minutes ago, 42 people caught by CBP that are on the terror watch list. Mm. Now, let me say, I was at the Chulia Vista station years ago, uh, and it was common practice that people would come in, they'd throw their legal documents away, a passport, an ID of some kind, put them in the trash, sew them in their closings, clothing not disclosed, and say they're from whatever country they said they were from. And that basically creates a new identity for them in our system. So if 42 people have been caught, how many, Mr. Speaker, have come in that are on that terror watch list that have a mal intent on our country? Ramifications, record human trafficking. And our cartel, our great friends in Mexico, virtually a cartel-driven border, making five, $6,000 on Venmo or in a promise to pay for each person trafficked, they're at millions, hundreds of millions, $400 million a month, some estimate, of making cash off this effort. Crime along the border is rampant. Fentanyl and drugs on our streets. We lost 100,000 people last year to an opioid overdose. The fastest rising cause of death for young people across this country, 25 to 50 years old, 100,000 dead, double what we lost in the Vietnam War, and fentanyl is pouring across that border. In fact, we've interdicted, again, what we've caught, we've interdicted enough fentanyl, this vitally poisonous drug, to kill 7.4 billion people. The spiring costs to our counties and our border states. So, Mr. Speaker, there's no plan, there's no policy, there's no national security ramifications of an open border. It's irresponsible, it's incompetent, and I call on Secretary Mayorkas to resign. His job is a failure. This administration has failed the American people on the border. I thank my friend from Louisiana for his leadership, and I yield back to him. I thank you, my friend. And I'll